All right. So if we were going to address the SEC, right? With any form of statement, you know, to obviate fear, shall we say, um, for encouraging the public investment. So the SEC only requires that there's a filing of audited financial statements, right? Because of the fear factor. They don't want loss from reliance on inaccurate information, thereby encouraging public investment in the nation's industries. It's therefore not enough that financial statements be accurate. The public auditor must also perceive them as being accurate. Public faith in the reliability of corporations' financial statements depends on the public's perception of the outside auditor as an independent professional. So if we're the people on our land and we're investors, where to view the auditor or the audit as an advocate or even a counter protester for the corporations or the corporate client. The value of each audit function itself might as well be lost if it doesn't have certain elements. Some of the more significant changes that have drawn attention to auditor independence requires, you know, certain requirements, shall we say, include the increase in dual career families and ever increasing mobility among all professionals, a broadening international presence of accounting and the growth of profitability of non audit services offered by accounting firms to audit clients. They could even be 501c3. These changes have led us to reevaluate whether our auditor independent requirements remain effective, relevant, and fair. In the 1970s, Congress, you know, seriously considered limiting the services of independent public accountants. Could provide that we are not directly related to accounting, even though at that time they had an understanding of non-audit services. But that didn't constitute a large percentage of the audit firms. Although Congress did not take action in 1979, when the chairman of POB warned the public about dangers arising from the growth of non-audit services, they knew long ago. The POB believes that there is a possibility of damage to the profession and the users of the profession services in an uncontrolled expansion of mass audit clients. Investors and others need a public accounting profession that performs its primary function of auditing the actual duties and accountability with both the fact that the appearance of competence and independence is there regardless. Those are developments which distract 
from this and will surely damage the professional status of a First Amendment auditor. Professional First Amendment auditors can and sometimes often lead to suspicious and doubts that will be determined to the continued reliance of the public. A profession without further and more drastic governmental intrusion is going to be what it is. That's why the Supreme Court ruled the way they did. Y'all have a good day. I mean, the fact that they added Roman law in text in the book is incredible. So at this point, they're acknowledging languages past the law in which the dialect it was written. So if you acknowledge a different dialect from a different time, you know, and this is just a key note of this trial that's going on right now. You know, um, honor impeachment based off of beliefs. I mean, I can go into it excessively, but the oral arguments there. I mean, accountability is the state or quality of being accountable to somebody for something or a responsibility. I mean, what more do we need to understand? Have a good day, you guys. This is just doing my thing. I've been studying for a long time and I just want to share some information. I know, buddy. Just a regular old working man, you know. Forced under the corporation's rule and policy, you know, if I want to get paid, well, oftentimes that corporation rule and policy wants to get rid of you because you know a little too much. So, uh, let's take care of ourselves. All right, step up the game. Let's do some more studying on the stuff that we can really do. And uh, let's get together. Cord out.